So, you've decided to give this whole Space Station 13 thing a shot. Well, I'm going to tell you basic controls and setting up your character and all that junk. So let's get started. First thing you want to do, click set up character. Here you can change basically anything you want. You can choose your name, click put whatever, whatever name in, you can click randomize, do that. Gender, age is, doesn't have any bearing on yourself in game, it's just for RP reasons. This randomizes your body. Then you can choose your species. There's a lot available on Paradise. And you gotta... I recommend starting out as a human. Because some of these races are special and have special needs that will prevent your death during like normal life. For instance, a plasma man is made out of pure plasma and has to be wearing this special spacesuit at all times, which you start out with it. But if you take it off, you're dead, basically. <laughs> and then uh, you can choose a secondary language if you want. Clownish is a good one. Um, blood type, uh, if you need a blood transfusion, you know. Just, you know, pick whatever blood type you want. Skin tone, self-explanatory. Disabilities. I recommend none of these because you just you just don't really want any disabilities. It's terrible. Nano tracing relation. This is also RP reasons. It uh, explains it right here. I'm usually I'm skeptical. And you can set your flavor text of your character, which also totally just optional roleplay stuff. Then. The hairstyle, the color of your hair, facial hair, so on and so forth. This stuff is quite important. This also lets you, uh, if you want to have an amputated leg, no real reason to do Welcome that, to but you can. Um, Enjoy your stay. Okay, so the, the round just started. That's what that means. Since we didn't hit the Claire Ready at the beginning, it, you know, it just started which I'll go through what that entails in a bit. You can choose to have a prosthesis, um, prosthetic, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> then you can like choose which of the manufacturer, manufacturer, and it, I'm pretty sure that just changes how it looks, whatnot. If you want to do that, you know, whatever, but for the most part, you want to leave this alone, especially if it's your first time playing. Underwear, undershirt, you know, this is all pretty self-explanatory stuff. But back to this. This is important. This is how you determine what job you're going to have. So, the way this works. So you want to be a scientist. You click once, twice, three times set to high right click to lower it to whatever but uh, this means what priority you want to roll these certain jobs so let's say you have a bunch of stuff selected so with this current setup scientist is the highest priority so if you are lucky and uh, other people aren't a scientist or whatever you'll get this, but if scientists are full, then you'll go to your next priority, which would be detective, so on and so forth, and then if that's full, you go to magistrate. If that's full, it will, n like, if you, if all your jobs that you've selected in here are taken, it just leaves you at the title screen, and, uh, it shows you this join game button instead of declare ready, which it also shows you this if you didn't declare yourself as ready before the round starts, which we didn't. But yeah, you just do however you want. You can only have one job on high. 
uh, at any given time because that's your highest priority then I'll you can have it however many on medium and however many on low as well so for your first time I recommend being a civilian which saying yes just disables everything so you can only be a civilian and what these special little names underneath these um, uh, things are basically they're pretty much just extra flavor text for your character so instead of a station engineer you click this you can be an engine technician or whatever instead of a civilian you can be a businessman so instead of it saying whoever the civilian has joined the station or whatever it will say you know the businessman has joined the station so I recommend being a civilian you can choose any of these it doesn't really matter and click done and then you'll see that your character has his uh, preferred job attire automatically equipped on him so that's that next game preferences this you're probably gonna want to leave alone since you're just starting um, this is basically the antagonist roles that you can end up being and clicking yes on them means you will be picked through you know it's RNG whether you get picked or not to be a traitor for instance but we're gonna leave this all alone for now you really shouldn't try and be a traitor until you've got you know basics down so just leave all these is off and then once you're comfortable enough with the game traders a good one to start out with uh, and just I would leave just trader if you're comfortable enough with the game and then once you you know figure get to be a trader a couple times then you might look into all the others which I will think about doing some antagonist tutorials later on. Those are going to be kind of difficult to do. Then this is new-ish. This loadout thing. This is totally just optional shit. You have five loadout points. And it's just like extra clothes that you start with. And whatnot. And it's just silly stuff. You can like start with dress shoes, and that uses up all five of your loadout points right away. And uncheck them, whatnot. It's all just extra stuff. So, yeah. That's all there is to that. And then when you're on, a, you're on an official server, you'll be able to save your setup. And it will uh, save it for you. And the next time you join that server, you can load it. And uh, your character will be there. And you can save slot as well. Which is actually the more... Uh, and when you click slave slot, save slot, usually it pops up with something. Like which slot to save it in. But since this is a private server and I don't have that set up, it's not popping up. But it's pretty self-explanatory. So that's how you set up your character. And then, like I said, if your job has already been taken that you wanted or you didn't declare ready, you're going to get this join game button, which basically overrides all your job choices. And then you get this list of what available jobs there are. And you click one and you join the game. So you would click civilian or whatever and you join the game as a civilian and that's all there really is to this title screen not much else to it if you want to say turn music off or ambiance off you can do that in this preferences menu and you can do a few other things here then there's OOC options I'll go into some of these when uh, we're actually in the game but yeah that's all there really is to this menu all right so here you are on this on the station so space station 13 is what I would call a medium scale multiplayer game 
about role playing your life on a space station and everybody has their own jobs that are required to keep the station running smoothly and there are also bad people who are randomly chosen at the beginning of the round to wreak havoc and complete their objectives and <clears throat> whatever and you know it's typically the job of the uh, station employees to stop that from happening depending on you know your job and the level of role playing on whatever server you're playing on low role play is pretty much in almost anything goes there are still rules but anybody can like you know hunt antagonists down and whatnot medium role play is less that and high rp i've never even dealt with but it's you know it just it's your own preference on how uh, into it you want to get which you know whatever you think i would i would try out all of them and see which one you know you enjoy playing in the most i prefer you know probably medium role play myself but and i think we're role playing can be you know kind of daunting for someone who's never done it but don't like sweat it you know you don't have to be like the funniest you know character on the station the first time you are there and you know most of the time this isn't a very serious game and most of the time people play as silly uh characters and whatnot so yeah first thing now let's after that's basically the concept of this game and I'm gonna teach you how to control things so when the game first starts up you're gonna notice this bar down here is red so that means hot key mode is disabled so what you're gonna want to do first thing is press tab and that's gonna enable it which lets you walk around with WASD and it also enables a few other things which I'm going to go over so <clears throat> let's uh, walk out here and uh, start interacting with the world so we've got uh, this is the tool storage and this is a good place to start I would say uh, we've got some budget insulated gloves here. I wouldn't recommend using those. <laughs> but for argument's sake, we're just gonna. I'm just gonna show you something. So, left click to interact with things and pick them up, usually. Unless it's something that can't be picked up, obviously. Then, you can press Q to drop whatever, whatever is in your active hand. And you can tell something's in your active hand. By this little highlight around this uh, part of the UI and you can actually press the X button to switch between what your active hand is and basically what your active hand is is what you're going to be using uh, your left click on so if I were to take these gloves and hit my click on myself with them I have challenged myself in the left foot and left leg you know I'm hitting myself with this right now so that's you know how you would interact with something when it's in your hand and um, so again Q lets you quickly drop something that is in your uh, hand then uh, press well that doesn't uh, apply to this but E if the thing in your active hand is something that can be equipped pressing E will instantly equip it to your character if it's something that can't be equipped it will automatically put it in a slot that makes sense 
so this crowbar attached to my like belt loop that thing went in my pocket this thing went in my pocket and when all these are full pressing E on something that can't be equipped puts it into your backpack so you can just quickly shove a bunch of stuff in your backpack like so <laughs> and uh, once we run out of space I'm trying to make myself run out of space okay still not out of space still not a there once for some reason instead of saying the backpack is full like it would if you were to click on your backpack with an active item it will say it's full if you press e on a unequipable item when it's full it says you are unable to equip that for whatever reason so and i didn't explain it but you just click your backpack with an open hand to uh look inside things and the same goes for this toolbox for instance you switch your active hand to the empty one, then click the toolbox and you can open it. Another way to open things that contain things is to click and drag it to your character. That also opens things. Now we've got all this fucking junk in my backpack that I don't actually need in my backpack. So what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag it onto this table and it dumps everything out. You can do that with any type of container like this toolbox you can if you're holding it and then you drag and click it dumps it all out on the table and uh, I believe you cannot do dump you can't like dump things out just anywhere you want it has to be on a table of some sort but we're gonna get this back because this is an item you start out with in your uh backpack which I'll explain in a bit all right so here's another useful key pick something up press R and you will see that when I press R this thing is highlighted so normally it's non highlighted and then you press R that means you are ready to throw whatever is in your active hand so you just click somewhere in the world and it will throw automatically and then it will unactivate it so you know the next thing you do it won't it won't try and throw it you just have to press R again then you can throw it this is pretty good um, also let's see this flashlight is useful for it whenever something's in your active hand that can be turned on or interacted with you press Z and it will do it as you can see that's how you turn this flashlight on I can't go into maintenance to show you what a flashlight does but I can imagine you can figure that out yourself same thing with we don't need these anymore so we can just throw them away same with this crowbar don't really need it so if you grab your PDA and it's in your active hand and you press Z it will bring up this PDA menu which uh, can be used to send messages to the other players that would be popping up here normally and you can keep notes and whatnot and it even has a flashlight itself if you don't have like a good flashlight you can use the flashlight on your PDA then you can just click here put it back or you can even press E and it'll just put it back automatically so let's see T this is useful when you you know you're actually on a server with other people that's how you talk just press T and that will say whatever it is in uh, whoever is in the radius of basically this screen will be able to hear that and then if you want to talk to the whole station you put a semicolon before what you say and that will transmit it throughout the common channel on the station which everybody can hear and I believe if you uh, I need to you're seeing a lot of stuff that you wouldn't normally see there I've de myself sorry about that 
this is what your tabs up here is gonna look like for a normal player. I forgot to I forgot to unadmin myself, so I apologize. So right clicking something this normally, you can examine it. That's how you uh, examine things. I was actually going to see if it will. You can activate it in your hand. Normally, there are other frequencies that you can, uh, like, for instance, if you're an engineer, you, uh, I believe it's, you type that, and then say hi, and that will for go uh, to the engineering channel but that's not something I can really show as an assistant uh, let's see what else ah intent well let's not I'll do intent in a second let's uh I'll show you this is a tool belt which is useful to have pretty much no matter who you are E to equip it and then you will see that if you pick up a tool like these wire cutters and then click the tool belt it equips it on the tool belt so a full tool belt will look something like I wish I hadn't dumped both tool belts out uh, we don't have a wrench yet and we don't have a screwdriver yet so this works much the same way a backpack does click it with an open hand and you see the contents of it like so and that's how that works and if you want to s notice how when you click it it doesn't move to your active hand so if you want to unequip this tool belt you have to drag it to an open hand to unequip it the same goes for your backpack and your jumpsuit you cannot click it to take it off as you can see you can normally click most clothing items and it will take it off automatically not the jumpsuit and that's because it's holding uh, it typically holds all this stuff and you don't want to easily be able to remove this because when you do it drops your ID and your PDA on the floor which isn't any good but that is how you take your jumpsuit off if you want to change your jumpsuit which I will show you this room just below here is where you can get a whole bunch of different outfits uh, let's see like an owl cloak and an owl uniform and then you can just press E so for instance since this is a jumpsuit it put it into uh, the backpack when I pressed E so what we want to do is t drag our jumpsuit off and then we can equip this jumpsuit get rid of that lousy jumpsuit and there you go Equip this cloak as well and that's how you do that how you unequip and equip a jumpsuit anyway <laughs> um, let's see what else is there um, this box that you start out with has a couple essential things in it. It has an emergency auto injector. If you're like really hurt, you can use that on yourself. It's easy to use it on yourself. You just take it in your active hand and click on yourself and it will use it automatically. This is an emergency breath mask and oxygen tank. So if you are exposed to space, which let's see if I can show you what that looks like you will get these warnings right here low pressure and no O2 so th this won't prevent the low pressure but if you equip this mask and then go ahead and put this oxygen tank in one of your pockets and then you click this how you turn internals on so now when I go out into an area that doesn't have any oxygen I'm still getting oxygen and but that obviously doesn't protect you from low pressure you can also click up here to turn the internals on and off you can adjust the breath mask by clicking it up here um, 
Yeah, and you can also, you know, toggle these owl <laughs> wings if you want to. This is where, like, extra interactions usually pop up if you have something equipped that has, you know, something extra to it. So, let's talk about intent. And we're going to use our dear friend Pun Pun over here as a, oh, well, I'm doing things without even teaching you how to climb onto tables. Click, drag yourself onto the table. Little progress bar will pop up. Then you will grab up, jump up on this table. So here's Pun Pun, the bar's monkey. But let's talk about intent. So you, you, you start out on help intent which help intent you just hug or you see this little paper doll down here this is basically how you target your own body part or somebody else's body part so if we click on the head with help intent you pat pun pun on the head so let's uh, talk about so pressing one is help intent two changes it to disarm intent three changes it to grab intent and four changes it to hostile intent as well as that you can press G to cycle your intents uh, clockwise and H to uh, cycle them the other way or it should why isn't it working well, that's weird H definitely did that before, and now it doesn't seem to want to do it. Alright, whatever. It's not important. Really, you should just use the num keys for it anyway. So, forget G, or H. Because apparently it doesn't work, even though in my notes here I definitely have it as working. So, help intent. You obviously can do that. And I just pulled him without even telling you how to do it. I'm terrible at this. So, before we get into pooling, <laughs> let's uh, show disarm intent. Somebody's attacking you, you're going to want disarm to do this. And all you do is click on the person. And you will, it's chance, attempt. So, right there, if this person... If Pun Pun, you know, was attacking me with a crowbar, the crowbar would have appeared on the floor underneath him because I disarmed him. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you end up pushing the person, which makes them drop whatever is in their hands and, you know, they're stunned for a brief second. So grab intent works a little differently. You click the person once to grab them passively, and then you'll see this little if they break away from you that happens you press Z to level up your grab basically and you can keep doing it keep pressing Z and it will slowly change to you know be more aggressive and you when you're grabbing someone you can also throw them by just pressing R and doing that but you can uh, he's gasping now if you grab someone uh, aggressively with this little blue hand right here you can throw them up on a table like that now when you grab someone typically they're going to be resisting you so you typically need to like be spamming the Z button like this when you're grabbing someone or they can break away quite easily or else they'll break away quite easily so that's intense talk well I didn't do hostile intent which I think should be pretty obvious what it does if you're aiming to you know do some damage you usually want to target the person's head or eyes and then you will punch them if you don't have anything equipped or if you for instance get your oxygen tank out and you will be attacking the person with your whatever is in your active hand you will bash them with whatever it is that's in your hand basically whether it be a weapon or you know whatever else so that's intense <clears throat> next let's see 
we'll do uh, buckling in and resisting, which basically what that means is how to sit in a chair properly. So you grab yourself to buckle yourself to a chair. This, this cape is sort of in the way. You grab yourself and it's kind of hard to see but you grab yourself onto the chair and it will tell you you buckle yourself to the wooden chair. Un to unbuckle you yourself you either click this button up here that unbuckles you or you can click the resist button down here and that will also uh, unbuckle you and if you don't want to do that you can press B B is the uh, keyboard shortcut for resisting which is also if somebody grabs you that's what you want to be pressing is resist also if uh, if you're ever on fire be sure to resist and you will stop drop and roll that's uh, pretty important to know <laughs> so let's see what else do we have here ah yes pulling Pulling is quite useful. We're not going to use pun pun for that. Let's uh, let's just most things can be pulled, even like little items like this. To pull something, you hold control, click the item, and you will start pulling it behind you, like so. You can do this to people, NPCs, you know, basic almost whatever. I mean, to show you what you can't pull would be you know difficult because just experiment for yourself basically is what I'm trying to say if you control click something and you're not pulling it well you can't pull it then obviously to stop pulling something you click this button down here and you'll stop pulling it and uh, let's I wanted to I meant to show you how tools interact with things because tools are pretty basic a basic necessity to know how to use we'll go back and get those now let's do the alt clicking which is pretty useful alt clicking a tile will bring up this floor tab up here and with that it will show you everything that is on that tile and if you move away from it it'll close so if I alt click this tile it shows me the floor the wooden table the salt shaker and the pepper mill then you can interact with this if you don't want to interact here you can just interact with things there and you will pick the things up and whatnot so that is useful let's talk about what tools can do because I think I've gone over basically all the uh, pretty basic controls. Oh, a few, a couple other chat options. Pressing O is OOC talking, so out of character talking. And then, uh, let's see, M lets you emote something. So, if you type flip in emote, oh, it doesn't work. Let's see. If you do the asterisk so there's a there's okay so there's a couple special emotes that you don't actually use in this emote but you know you can emote with this so like smiles see down there that's how you emote and that's also typically how you play as a mime since they can't talk um, but let's see here to do like I was doing flip if you press T to bring up say and then put an asterisk and then type flip you'll do a little flip and that's a neat little emote and another useful one is scream that's lovely so that's how you do that so let's talk about tools take a wrench in your active hand use it on a vending machine you'll start to unsecure it and I'll show you what that means now this vending machine control left click it now you can pull it and take it wherever you want and then to resecure it you can do that and I will also uh, so this is dangerous to do without a welding mask 
but if you're ever trapped in a room somehow with uh, you know these kind of walls and you have tools on you the way to get out turn on the welding tool click the wall it'll hurt your eyes and I just turned the welding tool off that's probably gonna mess this up yeah you don't want to turn it off you want to press Z to leave it on and then you have to keep it on until that bar is done otherwise it won't actually work so you'll slice through and then you can see we have gone through it now if we right click this also right clicking a tile basically does the same thing as alt clicking does except it gives this drop down menu so that's typically what I end up using and you can see you have options things that you can pick up you'll get to pick up you can move something to the top of a stack uh, so it'll usually appear above everything else um, and then you can also pull things that can be pulled but it will also give you the option to pull things that can't actually be pulled but as you can see we have now welded that wall down and it is now a girder so if you want to get rid of it completely you take a wrench and you click on it and it will disassemble the girder and you can escape from whatever fresh hell you found yourself in so pick that up you can pick the metal up teach you one more little useful thing with tools what I did there is if you have two stacks of metal and then you click on one stack with the other stack just to combine them just put a ridiculously high number in and it will combine the stacks as you can see I now feel a sharp pain in my head that's because I've been welding without uh, proper eyewear so metal is a cool little thing that you can experiment with when you activate it in your hand with Z you'll get this little menu to pop up which will basically have a bunch of craftable things which uh, will tell you how much metal sheets, how many metal sheets you need to craft whatever it is. So let's make wall girders since we tore this wall down. And now, if I were to click on these wall girders with this metal, it would complete the wall again. But we're not going to do that. First, we're going to take a pocket crowbar to the girders. And you'll see this now dislodging girders pop up. And then you can click on that and it will make a fake wall so you can just left click on this wall and it will open up like a door which is useful for you know secret hideouts and hiding shit so that's another thing to close doors behind you which is useful when you are actually you know in your a workspace that other people shouldn't be allowed in and you want it to close quicker you can click the door and it will close behind you that uh, the you, your access is completely determined by your ID down here and another thing you can do with your ID these are private lockers so you can swipe your ID and that will unlock it put whatever you want in it and then swipe it again and the only person that can now open this locker is you the captain or the HOP so that's a uh, useful for hiding things because I don't think typically people use these very much um, and really you know interacting is simple like it's left click to interact with things like this I've already gone over that and I feel like that's pretty much all you really need to know about um, basic controls for things uh, let's go over uh, so healing yourself let's first of all hurt myself by uh, just beating my another thing you can be on help intent but if there is no way to be helpful with whatever is in your active hand it will automatically go to uh, hostile intent with whatever it is so I am now hurt and this is uh, displayed by this little paper doll over here you can see my torso has been hurt quite badly and this is no longer at 100% health so 
you can, with an empty hand, click yourself, and it will tell you what kind of damage you have uh, got on yourself, which bruised means it's brute damage. If you see uh, burnt, it's obviously burn damage. And here's a handy little uh, free first aid kit. So if you grab it, drag it to yourself, you can see these are healing patches and you've got these burn patches. So what we need are healing patches since uh, we're hurt from brute damage. You apply one and uh, you get healed up. Apply another and it'll probably bring me up to full. Yeah, there we go. And if they're, you know, normally if uh, you're hurt, you want to just come to med bay, get the doctors to fix you up. And then I'll do a quick little station tour to close this all off with. So, as you saw, this is where I started. This is the arrival shuttle, which is where you will start if you are a civilian or if you join the game late, you will start there. If you didn't join the game late and you know you got the job you wanted at the beginning, then you just uh, you can um, you end up spawning wherever your job is basically. So we go here. This is the security checkpoint, which I've literally never seen anyone use. There's a little public garden here, which anyone can use. It's like a little bitty botany. This is the tool storage where pretty much everybody has access to. This is, I forget exactly what this place is called, but uh, as you can see, you can get clothes and stuff. And then there's bathrooms in here where people will probably drag you to kill you. Stuff like that. This is the vault. We won't talk about what's in there. This is the pet store, which uh, basically just has aquarium stuff. And then this is the gateway, which we can't access. So I'm really just going to go over what we can. Add. So this is secondary tool storage, which as you can see, civilians don't have access to. This is EVA, where all the spacesuits are stored and only higher ups are able to get in there. You go up here. This is where security is. So if you got a security problem, you will come up here and notify someone or over the radio. These are jail cells where you will be spending most of the time if you're a bad person or probably the clown. This is the mime's office. This is the clown's office. Uh, this is where lawyers uh, usually are. <clears throat> this is the bridge where the captain and all the higher ups uh, operate usually. This is just like a recreational area. This is a boxing ring and you can find boxing gloves in here. And the little pool and this is the hollow dome, which I'll show you how to use real quick. You can go over to this computer, click to choose whatever you want, night arena. And then you can uh, get swords and armor and whatnot and uh, fight basically in this arena and when you're ready you click this and then the other team clicks theirs and then you can fight and the damage you incur in this area doesn't actually it isn't real you will fall down and you will see your health like falling but it doesn't actually it's not actually hurting you this is the bar which we were in earlier this is the kitchen where the chef is as I showed earlier, this is med bay, and this is usually where food gets put out. This is botany. A lot of things are growing because I don't know what that sound was, but okay. This is the science department, which is usually, this is robotics, and this is research, which is very closed off. We won't be able to see much of it. Um, this, if you ever lose an arm, an explosion, or a leg, or whatever, you won't come to robotics, and they will give you a new robotic arm or leg. Or if you still have your old arm or leg, you can get it uh, reattached. This is the chapel, where you can fulfill all your religious roleplay needs. This is the library, where the librarian will usually be updating their news 
segments and whatnot. Uh, they're basically the librarian is basically either you know can make books or they can be a reporter and report on things going around the station uh, let's see we got uh, down here we have this is all like the bridge the bridge is a very uh, big area well technically the only thing that is the bridge is this but it's all like a sort of enclosed and connected area this is the HOP office where if you are a civilian and you've decided you want to be helpful you can get a new job here if the HOP is here this is cargo where people order things with this computer and whatnot you can interact with it and pick something you want to order and you can probably get denied if you're an assistant <laughs> Because no one's going to give you these little yellow doors. The, this is maintenance access, and you'll see a lot of those around. But unfortunately, assistants don't have, or civilians, don't have access to maintenance. But you could get it from the HOP if they're being nice. This is the engineering area. And then down here is the mechanics workshop, where the mechanic will be building their own space pod usually and I think that's more or less it as far as the station goes yep this is I didn't really explain what this down here is this is departures so if the escape shuttle is called this is where you want to gather and the escape shuttle will appear over here and yeah this is just a space pod bay sometimes you will see a space pod it's also a good place to get yourself a tool belt if someone hasn't already grabbed it <clears throat> But yeah, hopefully I've covered basically pretty much all the basic controls and, you know, gone over the concept of the game and whatnot. So I hope this has been helpful. I know it was sort of a mess in some places as I uh, sort of did things without explaining them. But hopefully I ended up explaining everything I did in this. Oh, one more little thing about the UI this is your hunger bar and you know you can get food from the vending machines but if the chef is doing their job you can uh, get their food and yeah, let's see if I can get myself filled up here no nope. I ate that entire box of donuts this thing is uh, sort of slow to update so yeah as you can see it shot up it will give you the message uh, like you unwillingly take a bite out of something if you're full and don't need to be eating. But, and I don't think I named these earlier, but these are your pockets in your jumpsuit. There's just extra space where some small items can go. Uh, not everything fits in your pockets. Not everything fits in your backpack either. <clears throat> but yeah that's pretty much it oh you can toggle between walking and running with this which you cannot tell a difference on my server since it's running so fast but this is walking and this is running the only time you really want to change that is if you see a wet floor you want to change to walking so you don't slip on it but other than that oh one more thing I forgot to explain this which is sort of relevant to an assistant but this little T button down here your crafting menu which to craft the things in this it tells you what you need in all these places and typically you don't have to use these crafting menus but it is helpful for showing what you uh, uh, you know need to make whatever there's usually a another way to make these things for instance I'll just explain it real quick uh, let's see what can I make really easy uh, let's make the bola so you need cable resta restraints and six metal so we're going to uh, break into a place that has metal real quick so you're gonna get to see some tool action 
Just click on this with a screwdriver, then a crowbar, then a screwdriver, then a wrench. It's totally deconstructive. You see one of these grates that doesn't have a wire running under it, you can clip it with this. If it has a wire running over it, under it, you're gonna get electrocuted. Then do the same thing with this. And bam, I have broken into this place. Grab this metal real quick, just to demonstrate. So we throw this on this table here. <clears throat> and we grab this, press Z to activate the cable, make some cable restraints. Those will pop up underneath you. Then throw it on here and then when you click this and you're in front of the supplies that are on your table, you will see that it is lit up. Then you can click it and bam, you now have a bola that you can throw at people. And this just ties around people's feet when you throw it and it snares them basically. That's how you use this crafting menu, but as I said, you don't have to use this necessarily. Because there is an old way to make basically all these things which I will show you right now how to make an IED real quick without using this crafting menu. So you need a drink, a igniter, a cable coil, and welding fuel. So go over to a cola machine, buy any of the uh, drinks, then go up here, grab yourself an igniter shove it into the can then find a welding tank click the can on it and you can see it's like lit up and take yourself some cable coil wrap it around it and it is now ready to go it's an IED so as you can see you can typically make these things a different way which the wiki may or may not tell you but to use grenades, now IEDs are dangerous because you don't know how fast they're going to explode. But there is something useful to know about grenades is to activate them, you press Z to activate it in the hand. But it also automatically enables throwing. So when, you're, you, when you press Z on a grenade, it will highlight this automatically so you're already ready to throw it. So watch. Z. Throw. So you don't want to press Z and then press R again because you think you need to, because that will unable, that will disable the uh, throw, and then you'll have an IED in your hand without the ability to throw it. But all you have to do to fix that is press R again real quick and then toss it. All right, now I believe that is everything and you should more or less know how to interact with the world and all that stuff. So yeah, I apologize if this was a little bit of a mess. It was a lot of stuff I had to cover and I probably didn't cover it in a great order. So I apologize for that. But yeah, that's that. And just, uh, you know, experiment like I've said in pretty much all my tutorials on how to do things and there's always you know people around that will help you uh, learn stuff so if you've got questions don't be afraid to ask somebody that is playing the game with you so yeah that's it I will talk to you later